This is the first in a series of lessons on creating hair in XGen for Maya. XGen is a powerful tool created by Walt Disney Feature Animation for instancing geometry and it's an excellent tool for creating hair but one of the main problems that most people complain about are just a lot of the sort of technical issues that they run into while using it in a production workflow. So beginning with this lesson which is just basically how to set up your scene and prepare your models to create hair. I want to go over some of those workarounds and things to really help people take advantage of this incredible tool. So the first thing you're going to want to do is set your project. So just choose a folder and click on set. I'll create a workspace.mal file for you and my also create this folder structure for you. So all your 3D scenes will be into the scenes folder and you can create subfolders under that like I did for characters and environments and different things like that. The reason that we do this is because XGen in particular creates a lot of different files to store all the different information that it needs to create here. And in order for it to find those files, you need to set a project to keep everything organized. So you can check your project like that, make sure it's pointing where it's supposed to. So the next step is to load your model, make sure your project is pointing to the right place. And then we'll start preparing it. So as you can see, I've made some 3D geometry for the hair. This is just a visual reference. It's a really fast and easy way to work out the basic shape of the hair that you're going to create later on in XGen or any other hair tool. So you can make sure that it looks good from different angles, that your 2D design translates well to 3D. So I'm going to go ahead and template the hair. I want to be able to see the model, but I don't want to accidentally select it. And I'll hide all the other objects. Now, on this geometry of the body with the head, I could actually draw the hair directly from this, but in my opinion it's cleaner to create a duplicate of this and have emitter objects that you grow the hair off of. So I'm going to go ahead and create a few copies of this object. So you have the head emitter, the head hair. Now these names are just so that I know just by looking at it or any other artist who opens this file can know just by looking at it what the purpose of each of these objects is. Now it's very important to name all of these objects before you begin because XGen is very particular about you know not being able to very easily rename objects after the fact. So I'm going to go ahead and save this under my scenes folder in a subfolder that I made just for hair. So now, for the head hair emitter, I'm going to go ahead and delete all the extra faces that I don't need. So I just really need his scalp and maybe some extra faces along the edges so that I have some flexibility if I want to adjust the hairline and things like that after the fact. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here and just delete all the extra faces and prepare these emitter objects and then show them to you. So here you go. These are the emitter objects. 
You have the scalp. So you can see I left some extra faces along the edges of the hairline. And cut around the ear and around the back. Next, I'll show you the eyebrow emitters. So this is the geometry that I'm going to create the eyebrows on. So you can see my reference geometry that I made for the eyebrows. Lastly, this character is kind of stylized, so I'm going to show you his mustache emitter. We usually we grow a mustache over kind of the whole area above the upper lip, but in this case, it's more like a wiry, stylized, cartoony mustache. And so I just selected those polygons uh, where I wanted the mustache to grow from. All of these objects later on, once I'm done creating the hair, can simply be wrapped deformed to a copy of the character's body, which can then just be blend shaped into your animation file or your render files really easily. So next I'm just going to freeze transforms on all of these emitter objects with translate, rotate, and scale selected. So this is just to clean up the models. So now all these transforms are zeroed out. And I'm going to delete by type history. So I'll delete the history on all of these objects. So go ahead and save the file. And now let's add some UVs to these emitter objects. So a really easy way to get some decent UVs on these models is to start with a plane. And I'll use best plane. Apply. And just do that to each of these objects. After that, I'll go to the UV menu, to the UV editor, with one of the emitters selected, so I'll start with the head, and just click on Unfold under Polygon, and it gives you a pretty good unwrapped version, so you get some pretty nice clean UVs. We just want everything to be properly set up and the models to be clean so we don't have any problems later on. His hair tends to be very finicky and very difficult to deal with regardless of which tool you're using for it. So it's even more important to just properly prepare everything before you really get started. So I'm just going in doing the same thing for each of the emitters. UV editor and choose unfold. And there you go. I'm going to go ahead and select all the emitters and delete by type history once again. And save my scene. And the last step is to go to hypershade. And we're just going to put a simple Lambert shader on all of these emitter objects. This is going to allow us to paint maps for density, length, or all kinds of other parameters when we're creating the X-Gen here. So 
but I like to try to keep everything clean and organized, so I'm going to go ahead and name this uh, Lambert shader. So that just by looking at it, you should be able to tell what its purpose is. And then I'll select the layer objects and right click and assign the shader. So there you have it. This is just a little introductory lesson. In uh, the next lesson, we'll go over some basics of creating fur in XGen. So we're going to use the XGen grooming tools, the groomable splines, to create some simple eyebrows. And from there, we'll have uh, further lessons on getting this character's hair created. So if you like this lesson, uh, feel free to subscribe so you don't miss out on the more advanced lessons that are coming your way. This is just a little introduction. So thanks a lot.